So hi everyone, my name is Shen Yan. I'm from University of Southern California. Today I'm going to talk about our work, what does perception bias on social networks tell us about frank unsatisfaction? This is joint work with Christine Ottenberg, Li Chia Wang, and Justin Chen from Meta Research. So in our work, we studied friendship, uh, friendship networks. Friendship networks plays an important role of online social platforms. It can impact users' online experience. Also, there are many social studies have focused on these networks. One study we focus on in this work is friendship paradox. It describes a phenomenon that on average, your friend will have more friends than you on social networks. This friendship paradox shows the inherent structural bias on social networks that favors the popular individuals. And also some work have been proposed that those different Network properties may increase the level of disaffection of the uh, network users, especially when the individuals compare their own friend count to that of their friends. But the most uh, sort of studies only focus on the observations and analysis of those uh, friendship paradox online, but it's still unclear how those phenomena shapes user sentiment with their number of connections. So in this world, we're trying to look at the friendship paradox and their relationship with user satisfaction. In order to get the friend con satisfaction, we're running a survey on Facebook. This survey has asking one question, how do you feel about the number of friends you have on Facebook? This is a seven point Likert scale questionnaire. So from scale one to three, it indicates that the user wants to have fewer friends. And scale four means the user wants to have the same number of friends. Scale five to seven means the user wants to have more friends. So scale four, we can reveal that the user will be satisfied with their current friend count. Well, for other categories, they're unsatisfied with their current friend count. We collect the survey information from uh, more than 85,000 users in summer 2021. And almost half of the users are female and half are male. They are from 211 countries. In order to understand their online behaviors, we also collect their online behaviors, like the number of posts and number of comments they receive during the past 28 days before they answer the survey. We look at the survey data we have. 44% of users indicate that they are satisfied with their current friend count. 47% uh, of the users want to have more friends, while only 9% of users want to have fewer friends. Well, when we look at the friend count satisfaction, the first thing we'll look at is the current friend count and their relationship with their satisfaction. There are some social theories, like the dumbest number, suggest that people can only maintain up to 150 friendships, even uh, on the social network platform like Facebook. But in our data, we show a different trend. So in our data, we can see that as a friend count increases, more, friend, uh, more users would like to have more friends. So it's a really counterintuitive trend. And then we're trying to understand why we can have this trend, like with the more friends, users want to have more friends. So we'll look at the different dimensions of friendship networks. The first is a friendship paradox. In our data, we found that almost 80% of users are experiencing the friendship paradox, meaning their friends have more friends than themselves. And when we look at the different categories, we can see that the users who are not satisfied with their current friend count will have a higher probability of experiencing the friendship paradox. So it shows that the friendship paradox do play a role in users' satisfaction. But we also found that this theory cannot fully explain the satisfaction, especially for the users with a high friend count. In our data, we can see that users have more than 3,500 friends. There are no users experiencing the friendship paradox. But if you remember the trend we have, so is those users have more friends, they still want to have more friends. So the next thing we'll look at is different dimensions that build up based on the friendship uh, paradox. We'll look at the local perception bias. It's derived from the friendship paradox. It describes a different phenomenon that some traits are more popular within friends than they really are. So for friendship paradox, they compare the traits of the yourself and your friend. But for perception bias, they compare the traits among your friends and the general trend of the networks. 
So when calculating the local perception bias, we can uh, uh, calculate the local perception of the friend count by uh, using the average of the friend count among the friends. And for local perception bias, it's defined as a difference between the local perception and the average friend count of the network. And this plot shows the distribution of the local perception bias across different user groups. We can see that the users who want to have more friends, they are more likely to have a positive perception bias, meaning their friends will have more friends compared to the general trend online. But when we look at the details, we also see that those perception bias still cannot explain the high degree users well. When the users with more than 4,000 friends, the perception bias are not significantly different between the satisfied and unsatisfied group. So one drawback of the perception bias is it using the is for each friend they have the equal contribution to one perception. But in reality, different friends may play different roles in individuals' perception. So one thing is their behavior diversity. Some studies show that diversity can shift users' perception. And also some social work have shown that the interest and behavior similarity also play a crucial role in people's satisfaction of their friendship. Another factor we'll look at is a friendship, a friend interaction. So users may receive more information from the friend with whom they interact more frequently. So in the next, we'll look at how those different factors will actually affect their user satisfaction. So first, we're trying to gather behavior diversity among different users. In order to gather diversity, we use the user embeddings to represent the user behaviors. We generated an interaction graph based on the user content, like their posts or comment and reaction with other users. So after we get those interaction graph, we could learn a node embedding using the PyTorch Big Graph library. So afterwards, each user can be represented as a 128 dimension embeddings. So based on the embeddings, we could calculate the behavior diversity using the cosine similarity of the user embeddings. So this plot shows the different uh, behavior diversity across different groups. So we can see that even for the users with the same uh, perception bias, the users who, uh, how, um, who want to have more friends, they will have a lower friend diversity. And also we'll look at the friend interaction. So we calculate the friend interaction based on the number of interactions, like the comments and likes between the users and their friends. So the plot show that for the user with the same perception bias, the user who wants to have more friends on average would have more interactions with their friends. So based on the observations, we do find that the diversity and interactions would play a role in user satisfaction and perception bias. So we then propose a new perception bias metric, weighted perception bias. So our weighted perception bias is trying to assign different weight to different friends. So we're considering the two factors. For the behavior diversity, we'll calculate it based on the one minus cosine similarity of the user embeddings. And the second factor is the user interaction. We will using, I will counting this uh, factor using the normalized interaction count among users. So here we will get our new metric. So the individual perception would be the weighted average based on diversity and interaction. So the weighted perception bias would be the difference between the weighted perception and the general perception over the network. When we compare our proposed weighted perception bias and the original perception bias, we found that our weighted version shows a better separation between different groups, especially for the users with a higher degrees. And we also are uh, running a model to show how our weighted perception bias uh, works better on predicting the user satisfaction. So we're generating the model based on random forest and we're using some basic features like the demographic information, friend count and bias metrics. So compare the uh, model using the original perception bias and a weighted perception bias, we show that our proposed weighted perception bias outperforms original perception bias for predicting the user satisfaction groups. 
After we propose those weighted perception bias, we also want to know how the perception bias and the satisfaction can correlate it with users' different on-platform behaviors. So in order to show that, we can also divide the users based on their weighted perception bias metrics. So we can have a positive bias group that includes the users who perceive that their friends have more friends than others, and negative bias groups will include the users who perceive their friends have fewer friends than other users. So here we show the user activities of different groups. We show the number of posted posts and the comments or likes they received. So we can see that even for the users with the same satisfaction groups, the users with a positive bias are more likely to publish more posts, even though they receive fewer comments or likes from other users. And we also look at more details about their uh, actions online. So we look at their conversation patterns using the conversation motives. Conversation motives is a way to capture the interactions between users. So there are uh, patterns extracted from the interaction graphs. Here we show an example that love one to reply to, to comment one. So which means that the user one post their comment, user two reply to their comment, and the user one love to that reply. So the ratio of different motives will actually tell us the conversation pattern the user will regularly involve with. And also we could categorize the motives based on the sentiment and engagement level. Because on Facebook, we could have different reactions based on different emojis. So we could categorize the motives based on their emojis to be the positive motives and negative motives. And we could also categorize the motive based on their conversation depths. So deep motives will capture the interactions that involve at least two distinct users generating the new comments. So here we show that the deep motives and negative motives across different groups. We can see that users in the positive bias group are more likely to have more negative motives and deep motives. So here we show that the users with different bias and satisfaction do have different on-platform behaviors. And then we further in, want to analyze their, how the behavior interact with each other. To so get into behavior interactions, we train a random forest model using the feature interaction to understand the behavior interactions. We're using the Shapley addictive explanations, Shapley values to explain the prediction model. So Shapley values will, pro will provide us information about how much feature contributions to the prediction. So as this plot shows, the y-axis gave us an effect on predicting whether the user is satisfied with the current friend count. And the x-axis, it was the main feature. Here we show the weighted perception bias. And the color indicate the interaction, interacted feature. Here we show the friend count. So from the plot, we can see that when the user have a higher weighted perception bias, it will have a more negative effect on their satisfaction. And also we can see uh, two clear patterns. There will be two groups. So when the perception bias, uh, when the weighted perception bias is positive, when we have a higher friend count, the user will be more likely to be satisfied with the current friend count. And when we have a negative weighted perception bias, higher friend count will make the user less satisfied. So it shows that if it also uh, answer our question about the initial one, like why would you we have the user that with more friend are more likely to have more friends. So in this work, uh, we try to understand the relationship between the perception bias and friend count satisfaction. So it also provides a different opportunity to improve the user experience. For example, we could uh, do the friend recommendations based on their perception bias and satisfactions. We could reduce the frequency of recommendation if the user do not want to have more friends. And we can also um, recommend the users with different diversity to help them mitigate their bias. There are also some limitations of the work. Um, so one thing is that the survey users might not present all users on Facebook due to the non-response bias. And also there are some additional confounding variables might exist, like their offline relationship that we cannot capture from their online behaviors. 
And for the future work, uh, we're also interested in look at the dynamic of the perception by the change over time. So thanks for listening. This is all my presentation. And we also publish our work. Uh, I like the notebook on GitHub. If you're interested, you can check it out. Thank you. Thank you. This was quite an interesting talk. Do we have questions from the audience? Mm. Hi, Andreas. This is Pushkal again here. Mm. I have a small question for you. Uh, so you mentioned about Sharpley values. Yeah. So I would like to understand how this is different from like the normal feature importance that we get from random forest. Yeah, sure. So we use this shape value so one thing because it can indicate the directions for random forest and feature importance for they're not giving you the direction like the negative impact or positive impact. That's so one advantage of the shape values. Another thing is for shape values, especially for this work, we want to show the feature interactions. So we can see with uh, when we fix one feature, we want to know how the other features would also interact with the feature for the prediction. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, thanks. All right, well, everyone is thinking. I also have a question. Um, you In the beginning, you mentioned Dunbar's number. And I'm, I'm just curious, because you have the interaction data, do you have any insights into how well this holds up in your social media data? Um, can I ask you to clarify about the interaction data? So, right, so Dunbar's number is about how many people you can have as friends. And the assumption yeah, there right. is that you actually interact with them and you don't interact with everyone you have as a friend on Facebook. But later on, you also looked into the interactions between users. So do you have any insight into how many people people on Facebook really interact with on a regular basis? Uh I actually don't have a really uh, accurate number, but I will say from the users we have in our collected data, the numbers is quite like have a part of correlation with their number of friends. So it's like there's some users do have a really high interaction number, like a hundred thousands of users interactions. So that's a, maybe different from like the dominant number like indicated. And yeah, we're trying to look at it maybe in the future. Thank you. Thank you.